that God gives men in this kingdom. The first level of authority is authority over things. When God elevates you and finds you faithful, he honors you and grants you authority over things. Things like money, resources, and all of those kinds of things. The second level of authority is authority over people. Not people in terms of subjugation. Let me say nations. He grants you authority over nations. It is a higher level of authority. So you're not talking of having money. You're not talking of having cars and houses. That is a very elementary spiritual level. The highest level of authority God can give a man is authority over his program. That God can trust you, not just with authority over things, not just with authority over nations, but authority over his program. That means God can say the next move depends on you. Are we together? Yes. There are men that before God will do things on earth, he does not come to inform them. He comes to consult with them. Not as though he is weak. They have transited through understanding to these levels of authority. He said, shall I hide this from Abraham? Abraham was not just his servant. Abraham was his friend. Now we live in a world where when you are rich, when you have money, when you have all of things, we feel that we have achieved the zenith of spiritual maturity. Why? Because my faith could buy a car. My faith could buy a house. I'm informing you by the integrity of scripture that if that is the basis, the credential for your measuring spiritual maturity, you are at a very elementary level. The weight of your physical house, your physical cash, your physical car, it counts very little in the realm of the spirit. Remember the parable of the five talents. What was the first gift he gave them? Talents. What was the second gift he gave them? Authority over nations. You have been faithful in this. Now I trust you with authority over kingdoms and nations. But the highest level of trust is trust over his program. That is the kind of authority that people like Anna the prophet has carried. They didn't seem to have houses, so you would think they were weak people. But Anna the prophetess literally prayed salvation to come. When Jesus appeared, she didn't say, I'm seeing a child. He says, now I can find rest. I have seen the consolation. It has arrived. So when you see, I'm trying to redefine your understanding because we have a generation, sadly, that has been a perverted as far as our idea of success and achievement is concerned. What will make a man that God has honored globally to come and it's, it, if he had gathered people maybe in their 30s, 40s, 50s, it would seem to make a lot of economic sense. But what will you do with people to, you know, these very little children, some of them here, and then to pour out his life? We need to learn to redefine the things that bring joy to the heart of the Father at his expense. You will look at these ones now and think they amount to nothing until you see what the power of God can do in the life of a yielded vessel. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I just wanted to say a word on that as a challenge to us. People brag around and say, I am a millionaire, I'm a billionaire. All that is nonsense. The only value that anything you have gets is how it participates in supporting the program of God and the agenda of the spirit. If you say you are a billionaire, it's not enough for the realm of the spirit to clap for you. What has the billion done with respect to souls, with respect to transformation, with respect to remolding destinies? In the seminary, we used to sing the song that says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. It says, only to be remembered by what we have done. No man's money has gone to the grave with him. No man's talent, in fact, has gone to the grave with him. Hallelujah. So this is a call for someone. 
You are about to give an excuse and say, I cannot sing. You may not be able to sing, but if you get three people within your care, three young ladies who are roaming around in a visionless way and put some level of order in their lives and help them to become better wives, help them to become better people, we make impact one life at a time. The idea of wanting to change the world has deceived many people to the extent that they are not changed themselves. You change the world by changing one person at a time. Let your life be a minus one to the kingdom of darkness that because God prospered me, someone went to school. Because God prospered me, someone came to church. Because God lifted me, someone got a job. Are we together now? Because God granted me influence, somebody came to know the Lord. Because I had an encounter with Jesus, he helped me to raise three other apostles, four other people. That is the testimony and the pride of the believer. We need to trust God for grace to get away from some of these mundane credentials that we bring and pride ourselves around. I am a great man based on what? I have an estate. Congratulations, we do not downplay that sacrifice. But what else? Estates don't talk. Estates are not, they, they, they don't, they, in themselves, they don't transform men except they are used intentionally as tools. While you are standing, I want you to pray one prayer from the depth of your heart. Lord, if you're changing someone in this city, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting Someone in this nation Don't do it without me Don't do it without me Lord, if you're blessing Someone in this nation Don't do it without me Don't do it without me So take my heart obtain grace tonight to become and to remain relevant in your program that every time you seek for a people we declare that we are available and for some of us we declare that we are still available in the name of Jesus bless our hearts tonight by your word and let Jesus be glorified for in Jesus much less name we pray God bless you please be seated if you can Hallelujah. Now, let me start um, by making two very, 
very important announcements and I want us to please listen, especially to our global family, those in the US and those in Europe. I need to challenge us every once and again we have a rise in the activities of fraudsters using my name to make calls and parade people around claiming to give prophecies and you know all kinds of things selling books and trying to do all kinds of things taking advantage of people's zeal and passion let me tell you this I've not said it here but for every scammer and every fraudulent person if I be sent of God may God judge you Amen. are we together now just because we keep praying the prayer of mercy all the time and we say Lord just take it easy with them I'm saying it again may God punish you Amen. and you would think it's just a man's anger till you see what happens there are people who have whose authority is derived from the very throne of God it is the reason why God grants us the character to manage our speakings because of the power he has invested within it imagine people calling someone to tell lies and say I am Joshua Selman and maybe a desperate woman maybe a widow trying to look for help for her dying son and you ask her to transfer hundred dollars one thousand dollars all kinds of things in in whatever name claiming to give prophetic words may God punish such people are we together that is on one hand but on the other hand ladies and gentlemen if you are spiritual wisdom comes with spirituality are we together yes there, but you should be able we are saying this for the sake of unbelievers and those who have not been connected genuinely to this family of faith I mean it, it does not make sense God bless you media right it does not make sense well this is not really the announcement this I'm not on social media doesn't get the job done you let them know that this this fraudulent and satanic activity is not I mean you misrepresent God you misrepresent the ministry and you cannot believe the millions of dollars that have been cut at these cameras. If they are not getting anything, they will not continue doing what they are doing. So please, I'm saying it to our family, Nigeria, and then our global family. Anybody who calls you, if you are in Nigeria and the person is within access, help us to take him to the police station. Hallelujah. Yes. That this person is a fraudulent person using the name and the guise of the ministry and please if you know anybody and you have any number please report to the security um, you can walk to a PR desk immediately after the service saying look I've been scammed by this and that it doesn't guarantee that we'll do anything physical but at least we can take action are we together now it is a, it's a, it's a very terrible thing People are hungry and desperate for God and there are people who take advantage of this. They wait for moments like today now. So Koinonia family, we have our official lines. There's the official protocol line. There's the official media line. Are we together? There's the official security line, finance, almost all the major departments that correspond with the international community and for those of us who are here who have come from other nations we receive visitors from several nations every week please ensure that you are not scammed we are a ministry of integrity and if you have any question the PR desk is at the back you can always ask questions Hallelujah. Don't allow yourself to be scammed because some of you, that scamming works because intrinsically there is greed and selfishness there. Are we together now? Yes. So please let's take, let's take note of this so that while we serve the Lord, we do not allow the devil to take advantage of our loving people who love Jesus sincerely and seek to love and to know him so that's very important um, the second that I want to just quickly bring before I charge our hearts tonight 
is I have been burdened because of my inability to have direct access to people. I know that not being in social media, you know, in this generation is very difficult because there are legitimate people that want to have access. So I decided, I told the media to come up with an email that I'm going to announce now and that I am the only person who will respond to it. It will be a direct email. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you what the email is for. Miles Munro said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, because this is the kind of thing, especially for this, our stubborn generation, when we announce good things like this to help people, you will find somebody just sending an email, just saying hi. This is not what it is for. Please, please, I don't mean to insult you, but let's listen. Instructions are important. People fly by instructions. This, this email is just to be able to help because there are people who, based on either their status or based on several other factors, distance, access, they may not be able to reach with certain information. And in as much as we allow the PR, the protocol, and the rest, it is only wise, even organizationally speaking, that there should be a platform where I can have direct access to these people. So it's AJS at koinonialglobal.org. AJS at koinonialglobal.org. You send an email there, be patient, and just know that I will reach you. So whether, especially for um, our family in Europe and US, we have conferences that we're putting together next year. So you find that handy so that when we begin the planning, we can instruct you on what to do and how to go about it. So let me encourage you, please, AJS at koinonialglobal.org. That is for now the direct link email that um, you would be able to send me a mail. Uh, there are some information that are very important, especially by people who might be general overseers, some of them politicians, heads of states, heads of nations. You cannot expect a head of state, maybe the president of a nation, to want to reach me and have to go through PR, you know, and so on and so forth. It may not suffice. Praise God. So that's it. We have it there. We release it in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it contribute towards helping the body of Christ and being a blessing to God's people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll take a few other announcements at the end of the service, but I'll charge our hearts and then we'll pray. Please pray in the spirit and ask the Lord to speak to your heart tonight. In the name of Jesus, we have already been challenged by Dr. Panam's ministration. That is already a message for someone tonight. Go ahead and pray. Mighty God, we give you praise. The entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. I made up my mind that I would still suspend our series to start next week um, since we gave some time to honor Dr. Panam and that which is being done. But then I want to charge our hearts very seriously. What I'm teaching tonight, please listen. What I'm going to teach you tonight um, is going to contribute greatly to your spiritual adventure, your spirituality, and your overall stature in the spirit. This is the assignment of the house of God to equip us with the kingdom tools that help us to be matured. Are we together? that helps us to be able to stand in power and in grace. This is our assignment as a ministry, and we're committed to supplying the intelligence alongside the empowerment by the Spirit that will help us to rise and to mature in the Spirit. I've been having a lot of very deep contemplations. I can tell you that in the last three months, I have had several encounters um, with God as touching the coming revival, as touching the move of God that is springing forth particularly from this nation and spreading across Africa, Europe, America. But I believe that I have a mandate to make a contribution as far as preparing God's army 
you would hear prophetic words from Nigeria to South Africa to Ghana to Kenya, you know, across Africa that there is a mighty move of God that is coming. And that is correct. What we are expecting is not some, it's, it's, not, it's not a lie, it's not a figment of man's imagination. There is an exact program in the realm of the spirit brewing up that will culminate to what I believe by the integrity of scripture and by the wisdom of the ancient about the greatest revival that is returning Christ. If you believe that, say amen. amen. And I sincerely believe that every one of us here has a major prophetic role to play in that revival. But you see, I've studied the history of the church in Nigeria and I've studied a bit on the move of God across several places like Scotland, you know, Finland, uh, Fiji Island. I've studied regions. I'm a student of scripture and I'm a student of revival. And I always like to study what brought God down to these regions in such power and in such grace. You would read every time in history that there was a time period where there was a mighty move of God. God just moved across people, moved across regions, moved across churches. When you read about the Azusa Street Revival, you read about um, the Welsh Revival, Revivals that happen in Scotland under men like John Knox and in our own nation here, great fathers like Apostle Babalola and the move that came in the 60s, the 70s. And it is important for us to not only anticipate blindly, but to become like spiritual archaeologists, to study the move of God past, to know why it succeeded and why it failed. Are we together now? And then to be able to draw spiritual lessons as we posture ourselves for the coming of this move. Across church to church, across different apostolic and prophetic platforms within this country and in Africa, you will hear people talk about the move of God. People have come with visions, prayer groups, you know. I've had the opportunity of visiting several prayer ministries. I was in... Um, Archbishop Duncan Williams, uh, the prayer mountain, the prayer tent, when I went to preach for him, massive, massive facility. And I had the opportunity to pray with his, you know, his private prayer warriors. My goodness, if you think you pray, you need to meet those guys. I mean, just looking at them, you will begin to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the charge that I gave them, and, and I've had the opportunity and the privilege of being at where I believe is the largest prayer mountain in this nation. It's headed by a woman, not even a man, not a denomination. Very powerful, solid woman in the spirit. You know them by their humility, their desire to not be known. But my goodness, they are deep, deep in the spirit. As I went around that prayer mountain, climbing as if I was going to heaven, I was tired but determined to understand. It was not tourism for me. Hallelujah. I've had the honor and the privilege of asking a few of the fathers of faith questions about the move of God during their time and what lessons they would want our generation to learn. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people who pioneered major revivals, all in a bit to be able to learn to understand for myself and then to make a meaningful contribution in preparing the body of Christ for this imminent move that is coming. So I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm teaching tonight. It's really a charge for me. It's a charge because we're going to be praying intermittently and I hope and pray that this teaching tonight will stir up a fire within your spirit. Amen. Who is this teaching for tonight? No, 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 I will tell you, you don't have to raise your hand. The teaching tonight, number one, is for anyone who hungers after God genuinely. Beyond the, 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 the drama of religion, beyond the drama of church, tonight's teaching is for people who desire God sincerely. Number two, tonight's teaching is giving life and meaning 
to the various encounters and visions that some of you have been having and yet you have not had definition around it. Tonight's teaching is for the Esthers, is for the Deborahs. Listen carefully. Tonight's teaching is for the, the Gideons that are still in hiding, yet they have the destiny of warriors that will conquer the Midianites. Tonight's teaching is not for a lazy and careless Christian as usual. Tonight's teaching is not just for a give me, give me Christian. Lord, give me tea, give me bread. There is a place for that. Tonight's teaching is for someone who loves God enough to be at the epicenter of his prophetic program for the nations. Tonight's teaching is for a pastor, a man of God, an apostle, a prophet who wants to be in sync with the program of the spirit for the nations to know this present truth what God is doing now not what he did yesterday tonight's teaching is for someone who has veered off the path of the spirit and you are saying I need to get my life back again Lord I know that you have a prophetic destiny for me and for whatever reason I seem to have veered off but right now I am ready to be at the cutting edge of my prophetic destiny. I tell you in advance so that you will know whether this teaching is for you or not. Tonight's teaching is for someone who has cried and prayed for more of his presence, more of his glory. That Lord, I desire that you mantle me with heavier and weightier dimensions of your power. Please help those under the anointing. Tonight's teaching, hear me please, is for people who from the bowels of their spirit, there are mantles that are crying for expression, waiting for a generation to hear. Those who are tired of sitting idle and being passive. Tonight's teaching is for people who are really looking for God. Not just for church, not just for men of God, not just for religiosity. Tonight's teaching is for people who are hungry, saying, Lord, there has to be more. There has to be more. Tonight's teaching is for saviors, those who know there is a mantle upon their life to deliver their families, to deliver their generation, to bring to pass the prophetic word that he has put upon their lives. Tonight's teaching is for those who are in pursuit for authentic stature in the spirit. Tonight's teaching is for those who desire to be friends with God, not just men of God, not just women of God. Tonight's teaching is, 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 is more than a training for a, a pastor, an apostle, a prophet. We are moving past that realm tonight. People who become the friend of God, like Abraham, like David. Finally, tonight's teaching is for men and women who understand that God depends on men for his prophetic end time program to come to pass. That God needs men. And they are saying, Lord, as you go around the north, the south, the east, and the west, do not pass me. I am ready and I am available. My grandfather was careless. He did not give you allowance into my family. My parents maybe were careless, but here is a chance to find a place in my family. Shanika paso brande Let me tell you the truth up front. The days that are coming are like the days of Noah. Jesus said the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, there were two groups of people. Those who were spiritual and discerning, who were busy about building the ark and preparing for the rain that was coming. And those who were eating and drinking and mocking the zeal and the passion and the fire of those who were preparing. It says, when you see the signs of the days of Noah, know that the Son of Man is coming. A sharp divide between genuine, authentic spirituality. 
and anything else that comes in between. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. And then I begin to charge our hearts. This is koinonia. Shabrande ke pashka lata pakata fresca de beledisia. Shania zabraska de la shabragedia paradosiata. It's a realm of your glory, it's a realm of your grace. I can see a mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Shabbat shalom. Wasting your time tonight. Ta -da -da. Ta -da -da. Ta -da -da. That as you seek men, oh God, we are available in truth. We are available in deed. Moving past the gates of religion, moving past the gates of religiosity into a real encounter with the Spirit. Please just press for one minute. I just felt stirred in my heart as I raised this song that the Lord would have us press in the spirit. There is a making that is happening in our lives tonight. Nina Kawa, we are Sarkin Salama Nina Kawo Go Tia Sarkin Sarkin Salama 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 Sarkin Salama Don't be tired. Dear apostle, this is a price for power and grace with God. 
We'll raise your banner up. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. We'll raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing. Yes, Lord. Let the maker make. Shale shamas kadiata. Let the refiner refine. Let the builder build. Let the maker make. Let the refiner refine. Let the builder build. Let the maker make. Let the refiner refine. In Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray please sit down just help those under the anointing there will be many impartations as I teach you notice what God has been doing these weeks be sensitive to what God is doing I want you to listen please the greatest tool for the revival that is coming upon Nigeria, Africa, and the globe, the greatest tool for this revival that is coming, that we claim will be greater than the world's revival, that we claim will be greater than the Azusa Street revival, that we claim will be greater than the revival of the 60s, the 70s, and even the 80s the greatest tool for the coming revival will not be anointing listen carefully surprisingly the greatest tool you will need for the revival coming will not be anointing the greatest tool for the revival that is coming will not be financial prosperity these things are important and they have their place the greatest tool for the revival that is coming will not even be skill and talent. Please make sure you listen carefully that this revival that has been prophesied by fathers and veterans of the gospel and prophetically from scripture that it will happen as it were in the days of Noah. It will not just be based on who is anointed. Uh -uh. It will take more than anointing to host, sustain, and be able to deliver the move of God that is coming. The revival that is coming will need more than financial prosperity. The revival that is coming will need more than skill and talent. In fact, the revival that is coming will need more than influence. As powerful as these aforementioned are, there are many people today who believe that they are prepared for a move of God just because there is the anointing. Congratulations, but I hate to be the bearer of bad news. The revivals that failed also had anointing. There was no mention of the absence of the anointing in the revivals that failed. 
There is no mention. In fact, many revivals that happened brought in economic you know, empowerment to the citizens by reason of the development that it brought people from several nations and it increased the economic stance of those nations and yet the revivals still failed. The Bible and history is full of gifted men and women who cheaply aborted the moves of God in their generation. So it will take more than skill and talent. The Bible and history again is full of very influential people. The Bible is full of people who had the eloquence of speech. And my goodness, modern history has revealed people. You need to read the writings of some of these men, like Charles G. Finney, E.M. Bounds. Their intelligence and their mental construct alone is, is a lecture for you. Aside from their spirituality, the depth of their understanding and the way they approach life was already superior by default. And yet some of these revivals failed. Now please hear me. This is what the Lord told me. The greatest tool for the revival that is coming and the greatest weapon for the revival that is coming will be a life that reflects the character of the Christ in thoughts, in words, in lifestyle. End of discussion. Isn't it amazing that beyond anointing, beyond skill, beyond financial prosperity, the Lord is saying that the greatest tool, the greatest prerequisite, and the greatest enhancer of the revival that is coming is not any of the things aforementioned, but a life that reflects the character of Christ in thoughts, in words, and in lifestyle. We are talking here about a realm of intimacy with God. Becoming a friend of God. You know, we live in a world right now where we are so conscious of being men of God. We are so conscious of being um, MOG. You know, when you say apostle, prophet, it seems to carry some kind of status. It can earn you access to the hearts of men. You can be endeared to men based on whatever title that you carry. But we are not talking about ministerial titles here. This is more than becoming an apostle more than becoming a prophet, more than becoming an evangelist. Listen carefully. This realm I'm talking about is a realm beyond being prayerful. This realm I'm talking about is a realm beyond knowing scriptures. This realm I'm talking about is a realm beyond being anointed. Because for us in the body of Christ, and sadly in this generation, it looks like the apex of your spiritual pursuit is being anointed. And don't get me wrong, the anointing is important. I have taught you extensively. But the days that are coming will need more than being an anointed person. The devil has fooled many people into believing that the zenith of your spiritual pursuit as you strive to be a man or a woman of stature is to get to a point where you become anointed. So we gauge our spiritual work. When you pray, when you fast, you check your level of anointing. Once it rises, you say, wow, I've made progress. I am telling you there are superior parameters for measuring power and strength in the spirit beyond anointing. You would be mistaken to think Anna the prophetess was not anointed. There's no mention of her healing the sick. In fact, the Bible says of all the prophets that came before John, he said John was the greatest. Show me how many people John raised from the dead. Show me how many miracles John did. And yet this was a man who was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Hear me. I wrote something down here. The church needs to be drawn back to the most superior parameters for measuring intimacy and success with God. We have used mundane 
and very inferior parameters. That means if I ask you to arrange any two or three people based on their intimacy with God, chances are excellent that you will use the parameter of anointing or maybe crowd in ministry for a man of God. Are we together? Or the extent of their knowledge of Bible or the extent of their dexterity as far as their commitment to prayer. These things are wonderful, but you will be mistaken. In the midst of all of this, you can still be deceived. There are more superior spiritual parameters for measuring the depth of a man's intimacy and walk with God. Are we together? Now, let me tell you the truth. This, 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 these are my very deep contemplations. When it has to do with matters of death to the flesh, when it has to do with matters of death to the flesh, it has to do with matters of character and it has to do with matters of Christ-like manifestations. I wrote here, there are no champions there. Let me announce it up front. There may be champions in the area of prophecy you can find people who as soon as you look at them. I once met a man of God years ago, sincerely. I'm not sure, he's not even on TV. I went for a retreat somewhere and I met that man. Have I ever seen a prophet like that? This man would prophesy head to toe and say everything. I have seen champions in the area of the prophetic. History, both ancient and modern, is full of people who took this Bible and literally transported it into their heads. When you listen to some of our fathers of faith, it's as if there is another eye that was given to them that they can open. Even some of us who have touched a bit of this, we know the labor in the spirit that brought this dimension of spiritual acumen. And yet you will hear the fathers talk about scripture. There are champions in the areas of scripture and revelation. There are champions in the area of church growth. There are people who you can take them to the village. They will bring every other village to that place. There, is, there are champions there. But when it has to do with the matters of death to the flesh, when it has to do with the matters of character, when it has to do with the matters of Christ-like manifestations, I repeat, there are no champions. Is someone learning now? Philippians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 12 to 15. Apostle Paul, the, the, the deep revelator or revealer of scripture. Apostle Paul, the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament. Not as though I had already attained. Paul is not afraid of saying this. Now you have to understand that he's speaking to the people he's mentoring. How many people have the sincerity and the unashamedness to stand before your mentees and admit that as much as they admire you, as much as they desire to be like you, you yourself have not yet attained. There are higher and deeper levels in the spirit. We live in a world where our pride, especially as men of God, is derived around the, the extent of our superstitiousness, if I will use that expression, and our, that, that kind of godlike mysticism. Here is an apostle who is saying there's no need to hide it. I have not already attained. Either we're already perfect, the word there is matured, but I follow after. Even while mentoring you, I follow after. Even while imparting gifts upon you to be established, I follow after. In other words, I am a student myself, just privileged to be in a higher class in the spirit. If I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended by Jesus Christ. Reading to 15. Give us verse 13. Brethren, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before. He says, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He says, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. 
That means carry a mentality that never allows you arrive. That you know that no matter what kind of exploits you are doing in the spirit, no matter the level of the anointing, no matter the level of achievement in the spirit, that you know that there are still deeper and higher realms and dimensions in the spirit. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Now, the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the state of man, man as God's creation, with respect to the subject, please look up, with respect to the subject of sin and the flesh. I have taught you here that there are two things that man has to deal with. Number one is sin for an unbeliever. But for a believer, even though you have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, the Bible talks about the flesh. With one confession, you are free from sin. But it is not one confession that frees you from flesh. Many believers do not understand these dynamics that you have to be free from the grip of these two things to be able to ascend the mount of God and do mighty things with God. Being free from sin, as wonderful as it is, is the entrance into the kingdom. But there is another major limitation. Are we together? And that when it has to do with the limitation of the flesh, it has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is a limitation that is enshrined in all men. Please, I want you to listen to me. Let it be from the depth of your heart before you become a casualty to yourself. One of the biggest problems that has affected the revivals. Years ago, I preached a message why revivals die. It was a product of a research that I had. I had to study the moves of God and why many of them died. And I found out there was only one reason why revivals die. The humanity of men. Not lack of prayer. Not lack of fasting. No. Not lack of Bible study. Not even lack of going to church. The fact that the careers and the ones who work in partnership with the Holy Spirit to sponsor this revival are men. Listen, when you press to know God, the next project in your spiritual adventure is to know yourself. If you do not pay the price to understand yourself as man, I give you a guarantee you may not arrive. You see, history, the Bible, and history is full of many great people. Some who crashed, did not finish their project. Some of them were voices that were motivations to their generation. And sadly, towards the end of their lives, something just happened that just eroded their testimony of many decades. And let me tell you the truth. I have studied people who have risen and stood and finished to the end. I have studied people who did not even start. I have studied people who started and did well and fell. First for my own life and then to be able to unravel this cancer of not finishing strong in the body. Are we together? I can tell you 95% of the people who have fallen in history and in the Bible are a lot more upright and sincere than many people in our generation. Yet they did not stand. That means we have to learn there is something we need to understand about man. There is a lot of blind, bold face and arrogance that people are communicating in the body of Christ. There, are, there have been sincere people who carry this baton of the faith with integrity and truth. And even with that, some of them did not finish strong. It therefore is a challenge for us to understand what does it take to stand and survive, being a light even to the end. You may examine many principles. You may say they were not anointed and demons came and destroyed them or they were not, they didn't understand this. Those were, they can be very valid reasons. But one of the greatest reasons is that they do not understand the construct of the fallen man. You see, when you understand yourself, 
in light of the limitation that is upon all men, it will put pressure on you to need God as a matter of life and death. Your need for God will be artificial until and unless it is derived from this revelation of how incapacitated you are out of the assistance of God. When it has to do with the issue of the flesh, there is no man who sustains by default indefinitely the capacity to survive the varieties of, of the, what do they call it now? The, the various chains that the flesh can bring upon an individual. Please listen very carefully. For someone, tonight's message will be a lifeline. Is what you will hold on to. That at the end of your life, you will stand with strength and with grace. When Dr. Panam was speaking about this, our dear ones here, and was praying for them. You know what was in my mind? I'm very philosophical in my thinking. I was not even really focusing on the people and him. Number one, I was looking at the age difference. And then number two, I was asking what did he know and what did he find that kept him there? Because my goodness, this world, we have seen skilled musicians that did not last six months. Like Orange, they came out with fire and that's it. This race requires a skill. Have you seen people run 100 meters and others don't even know how to stand well? From the first step, they are gone. Others will run to the end. Others in running, they, they've not taken time to master this thing. The flesh is a subject that has been approached from two standpoints. Number one, from a standpoint of avoidance. People refuse to talk about it simply because of the embarrassing situations that are wrapped around the subject of the flesh. When you are dealing with the matters of the flesh, it comes with a lot of embarrassment because it seems to expose man's limitation at its highest. So most people prefer to throw it away and not talk about it. And sadly, some of the teachings that float around the body of Christ today use all kinds of things to just cover it and push it away. Whereas people are dying and they need help and need it fast. Number two, those who approach it from a standpoint that is not scriptural and all that happens is unraveling the depth of darkness that is shrouded in flesh without proffering a scriptural pathway that leads to victory. Are you seeing the problem now? So there are people who approach the subject of flesh by avoiding it. So we have all kinds of things that are as a result of the flesh with no strategy for victory whatsoever. And for others, they only end up feeling condemned because they now come into the awareness of the, 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 the supposed strength of the flesh on them. And then they begin to ask, can I really survive? Will I really survive? Tonight is a word of hope. Let me show you two scriptures that define the state of a man. Every man, including the person preaching to you, listen carefully. This is liberty coming. Psalms 51. We've read that scripture before, but now you pay attention. Please give it to us, media. Let's hurry up. I told you it's a charge. I hope and pray that it remains a charge. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions too. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. I've told you that iniquity is not sin. There is a difference between sin and iniquity. Iniquity is a perpetual, continual, willful state of rebellion against God and his principles. And cleanse me from my sin. Are you seeing the difference there? For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Verse 4. It says, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil thing in thy sight. I hope you know this was the Psalm of David. Are we together now? When prophet Nathan came to him over Bathsheba and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5. 
Behold, now this is a very powerful information. I was shapen in iniquity. That means when my father met with my mother, what happened there was not just biology. There was the DNA of sin that followed. Already, as that baby was growing, he was growing with the possibilities for every kind of sin. Please listen, you have to get this. Most people think the things that destroy them are land. It's not true. The things that destroy are not land. They are activated. It is resident within man. You need to listen so that you will understand the pathway that has been created. I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Next verse. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh-huh. Let's hurry up media. Purge me with high soap and I shall be clean. The psalmist is praying. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. I wonder what that looks like. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Verse 10. It says create in me. This is the scripture. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. So what is the name of the one you have first? Create in me a clean heart, not a heart. I'm not praying for a heart. I am praying for a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit. He uses the word clean. He uses the word right. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Three more verses. Cast me not away from your presence. I will explain to you the meaning of this. Because this statement right here is how the clean heart will be created. Are you following now? The possibility of having a clean heart created depends on your encounter and your intimacy. He says, do not rob me of the privilege of having access to your presence. Remember, Moses prayed this same prayer. Don't let your presence go away from us. Moses was the meekest man. This one was a man after God's heart. Two of them, it was presence dependent. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of salvation and uphold me with the free spirit. 13. It says then, then, only when I have gone through this, I will be able to teach transgressors your ways. Because he's saying, I'm not the only one with this tendency. So let me make myself the guinea pig to pass through this and explore in the spirit. And know what it takes to command victory. As a result of my own victory, I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Is someone learning? First John chapter 1 from verse 8 to 10. Apostle John is speaking still about the state of man. He said, if we say we have no sin. He didn't say, if I say I have no sin. He said, we, everybody listening and everybody who will read. If we say we have no sin, he said, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Nine. But if we confess our sins, he says, he, God now, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. If someone is following, say amen. amen. These two scriptures in without any sense of ambiguity they describe for you the tendency of every man regardless the effort you make in yourself and by your strength to remedy that situation in iniquity did my mother conceive me there are many people who carry children as babies begin to grow in holy families that love the lord a baby is growing and you look at him and say, baby, how are you? He slaps you with his hand and while you cry, he's laughing. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. 
This is a baby that has not done anything. He will wind his tiny hand and give you a slap and you pretend like you are crying and the baby is laughing. Then he slaps you again. Where did that possibility come from? It was not outsourced. It was activated. Now, let me tell you how sin and the flesh works. It doesn't come from outside. It is within, but it needs an external activation system. And it can wait patiently for many decades. So, you can be deceived to think because it has not manifested, it is not in you. Are we together? The Bible here tells us to not wait until the things that can activate what is locked up within us come because it may come at a time when your reputation is at stake it may come at a time when you are 30 years 50 years in ministry it may come at a time where you have two more years to finish with dignity and then something just comes and cancels out all the years let me tell you the truth when you understand what I'm teaching you, you will know that everyone that God is using, you owe them your prayer and your intercession. That prayer that God will keep and preserve people to the end is better than buying a car and giving someone. Is someone learning? Watch this now. So the Bible talks about the state of man. The next thing we should look at is God's standard. There is a standard for intimacy and friendship with God. Now, this is the challenge sometimes, respectfully speaking, with some of the gospels that we receive in the body of Christ that makes you just believe that friendship and intimacy with God has no conditions. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but let me tell you sincerely, not everyone can become the friend of God and not everyone can access that realm, can ascend to that realm of depth and intimacy with God except and unless you fulfill the conditions regardless what time we are living in whether it's 21st century 20th century whatever century we are living in the standards of god as far as friendship and intimacy is concerned will never change what are his standards psalm 24 verse 3 and 4. psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 gives us the standard of God as far as friendship with God and intimacy with God is concerned. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? The answer, next verse. He that has clean hands, a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That's the condition the Bible gives. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read from verse 17. If God is speaking to you, say amen. amen. Pay attention now. Let's read. It says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Keep reading verse, next verse. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to walk all on cleanness with greediness. 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Uh-huh. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Keep reading. That ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Watch the things he says to put off now. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Uh -huh. And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which is after God recreated in righteousness and true holiness. 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Paul had to find a way of saying, how do I say this now? Will I really say don't be angry? 
many times was Paul angry himself? You will see it in his epistles. He said, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. 27. Neither give place to the devil. Next verse. Reading to 32. Let him that stole. Before you say steal no more, there must be him that stole. Rather let him labor working with his hands. The thing that is good that he may give to him that needed. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers next verse it says and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption two more verses let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and all malice 32 it says and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you now look up please let me tell you something that um, I have I have observed sadly with the body of Christ it looks like for you to gain respect and to be looked at as a man of integrity you have to be a preacher of righteousness and to deal with all of these things but the the trouble here is that most times in discussing the subject of the flesh what we men of God do and that extends to fathers in their families leaders generally is that we line up all the attributes of the flesh and find the ones that we are guilty of then we exempt them in our discussion so if I have a problem, I, I, are we together now? Yes. If you have a problem with stealing and money and you have collected money from politicians, when I'm hammering on the issue of flesh, I will nicely dodge away the issue of corruption and lash out on things like immorality and the rest and say, be a person of character. When you are training people to be men and women who die to the flesh, there has to be a holistic capture of everything that needs to fall off until people become people of spiritual stature. Are we together now? Very important. It's a mistake that we make and it's not because we are bad. It's just that sometimes we are weak as men. So when you have an issue, maybe issue of morality and whatever, when you are dealing with issues of flesh, you will hit issues of pride, issues of bribery and just brush away the weightier matters. That is how Many people have been addressing the issue of the flesh. That is why believers have not been empowered to deal with it. Watch this. Many of you here are virologists, microbiologists. How do you deal when they say a virus or a disease is out? What do you do? You don't run away from it. The first thing you do, medical science teaches us that you isolate that uh, whatever it is. Am I right on that? And you begin to study its operation. You now study if this is a virus, how does it work in the human body? Now you begin to learn how it works. And sometimes you can now use several parameters to come up with an antidote. Running away from the reality of that virus will not cure it. When the pandemic came, many people were, as much as we were having social distance, there were people who were close to the COVID themselves. They had to be close to it to come up with a vaccine. Is someone learning now? So just talking about the issues of the flesh and running away from it without examining the intrinsic nature of man and looking at a scriptural solution that provides victory, we will only be, we will only be programming casualties again and again and again. The Bible already comes to the conclusion, to the hearing of all, that man unassisted by God has tendencies you are not even aware of. Are we together? The Bible talks about Jesus. One day he entered into the temple and he saw people making merchandise of his father's temple. You know what Jesus did? He went out as if he was going out of the temple. The Bible says he got a whip 
and he came and began to flog them and threw the, the, the table of the money changers. And he said, the house of my father should be a place of prayer and you have turned it into a den of robbers. Look at that kind of zeal overturning tables. Many of you are legal practitioners here. If you sue Jesus to court, how will you judge that case? You will say, Jesus, you are not Caesar. Jesus, you are not the Herod. What authority did you have to turn their tables? You would have reported them. When Jesus, you need to know why Jesus is still interceding for us, even though he has died. Because when he walked as a man and went through the things that men went through, he had to go back with his body as a man. And even while he was seated, everything is done. He said, I will still intercede. In other words, that ministry of advocacy, he will say, Father, I know exactly what that man of God is going through. Because when I went to Jerusalem, I know what it means to give people bread and they say crucify him tomorrow. That man's anger, please do not put it as an offense against him. I, have an, um, I, I, I understand what it means. That's what it means to be a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Please listen very carefully and learn. It's easy for you to look at a man and say this man is a wicked man, harsh to all his children until you find out the story of that man's anger. You will find out that at 18, that man was one of the most gentle person you will ever find. But all the siblings and everybody died and they left him with 30 children to raise all of them. That was the origin of that anger. The anger was in him, but there was nothing to activate it. And because it was not dealt with by the strength of the spirit, the presence of 30 children versus their school fees and a job that is the, the salary keeps declining is what activated that. No wonder a couple will get married and a woman will turn and say, this is not the man I married. Let me tell you, that's the man you married. It's just that what the, the activation system when you see a man nice to his wife and say, I will never touch you, he's talking nonsense. If you are speaking by the agency of the spirit, you are right. But if you mean just because I love you, keep watching, your heart is listening to you. The day that something will happen, a man called me one time, I think there was a year that the man reached me, true story. A small boy went to kick a car kick the man's car, you know children and all these their things, and he just crashed the car through a fence. The man was thinking of how to beat and kill this child. How do I start? It's not whether I would do it. I'm thinking of how I'm going to start killing this child. So when you are an onlooker, you will say, what kind of an angry man is this? Whereas the same thing in him is in you, waiting for an opportunity to come out. Why is this person jealous? Why is there jealousy among men of God? Why can't they just walk as one? Don't worry. Say you're about to start ministry. By the time you start ministry and after 10 years you have only three members, you will know why people get angry. This is not an issue of good or bad. It's an issue of the human nature that has not been examined to be understood. ta da da ta da, -da. Da, da, da. when you go to pastors conferences and you see men of God crying the man of God just raises a song of worship and you see a pastor rolling let me tell you why he's rolling he's rolling because after 20 years of ministry he does not even understand himself again he's sitting before the presence of God and saying, Lord who am I you have to answer me now I thought I knew myself 20 years ago but right now I don't even know who I am again Let me tell you sincerely, everything you ever see that manifests did not come in. It was always there. But there is a system God has provided to be able to tame the flesh with understanding. Not in the strength of the flesh. Taming the flesh the, in the strength of the flesh is a total waste of time. It's like trying to push a wall. You are the one who will be tired. Is someone learning now? Apostle, me, I'm a man of integrity. What has tested you? Apostle, I don't, I don't like with me the kind of grace God gave me. If I see women, they are like trees.
and men too, vice versa. Even if one billion naira is given to me, I won't collect it. And your heart is saying, it's because we have not gone together. It's only your mind that has gone. That's why your mind refused to collect it. Let your heart follow your body when you see that money. Especially when your loved one is in the hospital. Say, my son, is this how you will leave me to die? Then you will now know why the young lady started following one man for money. And mercy will be in your heart. You will no longer say, all these ladies moving around. Because you had the privilege of a family that could support you. I'm not excusing licentiousness. You get my point. I'm revealing to you something about the state of man. So many people say this guy just became bad. Or this pastor changed. Or this businessman changed. No, you got it wrong. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. By the time you start a revival, you know, most people who start ministries, maybe fellowships and the rest, provided it's a small fellowship where people meet under a tree. There's no reason for jealousy and pain and what everybody's just praying. So you pray, there's no basket to drop offering, so there is no thief to pick anything. But that does not mean among the prayer warriors there is no thief. Generational causes, demons and wicked spirits hiding while you are praying. And the day somebody comes and says, I want to donate 500,000 to this small fellowship. Someone will say, what? was Judas always bad? You are wrong. Yes. The problem is that what was in him? Do you know the kind of screening he must have gone through to be Jesus' treasurer? Remember, Jesus prayed all night before he got the disciples. And not even Peter was given the basket. You don't know the kind of offering people gave Jesus. That's why you are talking. A woman who comes to break one year's salary at his feet. Look at Gehazi. When Gehazi saw what they gave um, Elisha, Gehazi went back and said, hold on, please. My master is a stupid man. He doesn't know that I work with him. Even if you don't want much, you, a king gives you this gift. And Elisha said, was my spirit not with you? So Jesus looks at Nathaniel, who just finished criticizing him, and hear Jesus' verdict. He's an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. How could you say that about that man? There are many people today who look like drunkards. But let me tell you, they are more of stature in terms of the purity of their heart than several people. Because by their strength, they have tried to patch away a lot of evil. This is the one that trapped them. But there are many people who were born again. It was with scripture they came out. They came out with their father prophesying on their mother. You shall not die. That's how they came out. And from that day and still in the atmosphere of the anointing, only God knows the possibilities that is within their hearts. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. Listen, this, this revelation bar puts you in a position immediately where the presence of God does not become a church thing again. In other words, you are saying, Lord, I don't even know the variety of tendencies that are hiding within me. Apostle, I don't drink. I will never drink. It depends on what was given you before that time. It's all this, this thing that causes ill health and death. Will you drink it? Your fear alone will make you look like you are disciplined. There are many people who are not disciplined. They are just afraid. And that fear is because of ignorance and low-level orientation. By the time you enter a king's palace and see the delicacy that is in a king's palace, you will respect Daniel for saying he will not, he purposed in his heart that he will not corrupt himself with the king's meat. Before you say amen, find out what is the king's meat. Have you seen a king's table before? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The heart of man, the nature of man's heart, please listen, is the biggest limitation to that man's rising and also to the program of God. And if you do not understand how to administer this prayer, create in me a clean heart, O God, 
and renew a right spirit within me. I give you an assurance. I hate to be the bearer of bad, a bad news, but you'll be surprised. A man of God who goes to get charms to do ministry, it's easy for you to stand and say, all these people serve, they get charms. Until you find out the pressure that is upon him. That man will tell you at age 15, people vowed that I will never make it. And out of that, they delved into all kinds of things. And now they've messed up their lives with all kinds of superstition and demonic activities. Yeah. Nevertheless, God's standard will never change. Are we together? To be a friend of God and to access the heal of the Lord, the Bible gives very clear conditions. And let me tell you, it is not within the power of any man unassisted by the Spirit to be able to attain that realm. This is the reason why Jesus looked at the zealous disciples. They went to preach for a few days and they returned back rejoicing. Remember the story? Even the devils were subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, what are you going through? You've not gone through anything. In the course of time, trouble started brewing. The trouble that started brewing was number one. Who was the greatest? Remember the story. And then somebody, the mother of James and John came to now start negotiating a position. And the other disciples had it and they were angry. You now see all the elements of flesh. One day they summoned courage and said, Jesus, listen, we have left all to follow you. We have respected you enough. What is in this for us? Jesus didn't turn and tell them, you are stupid and wicked people. Mm -mm. He said, I know. Peter, who said, I love you one moment. And Jesus is telling him, get thee behind me, Peter. And then he said, Peter, Satan has desired. You didn't even know when he got into your heart to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. When Peter denied Jesus Christ three times and ran away, he went back to fish. Do you know when Jesus resurrected, immediately, Jesus went to the seashore. If I'm Jesus, I'm sure I'll say, Peter, come. <laughs> and if you don't come and allow me walk on that water, you will know I'm the creator. But watch Jesus. Are we together? Peter came and saw him. Do you know Peter's verdict? Depart from me. I am a sinner, an unclean person. And Jesus said, no, sit down. Then he asked a question when they ate fish. He said, lovest thou me? He said, Peter, Simon, but Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? Peter said, I love you. Jesus never said it's a lie. He said, feed my lamb. After he spoke, the disciples, their blood was hot. They were boiling to start evangelism. He said, Tarry, don't you leave that upper room. If not, in two days, you will go back. Remember what happened within three days. Help them, please. Do not, please, let me have your attention. Are we together now? Tarry. There are many people, listen, believers, let me teach you something. There are many promotions and open doors that are closed to, doors that should be open that are close today, not by the devil. I have told you this thing. Not every manifestation that carries a semblance of evil is evil. There are many of them that is an expression of God's mercy to preserve you because you have been weighed in the spirit and you lack the stamina to survive that kind of thing if it comes. There are many of you today who do not have jobs or do not have an opportunity to go abroad. I'm telling you it's not because the prayer of the man of God is not working. It is a sign of God's mercy to keep you quietly. That's why the Bible says in all things to give thanks because you don't even know what God is doing. Imagine if I came to Abuja in 2013. Only God knows what would have happened now. Maybe I would have died by now and a story would have been written. One man of God who left Zaria and came and within one year, when they gave him one billion, something happened to his head and that's the end of it. Young ministers, let this be a lesson. Wait for God's timing. At the end of your life, your life will be an inspiration to the next generation or a warning that when people want to say, hear God, they will say, make sure you don't hear like this person. Is God teaching someone now? 
There are many things you are complaining about. At the end of this service, you will need to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I did not get that job. Thank you that that person who was asking me to come to Europe, I didn't get my visa because that person was training prostitutes in Europe, not a job. I was desperate to get out of Nigeria, yet I cannot pray for two hours. And then you want to go to a land where people can walk naked and not matter. Whereas you are in a place where people are covered from head to toe. You are still not all right. Listen, look at me. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at me. Let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you sincerely. Until and unless our generation understands the construct, the intrinsic weakness that is in man. That's why when God looks at man who ignores him, he calls it pride. You know why it is pride? Because the Bible says he knows that we are dust. Do you know how dust is? Does it have the power to keep itself against the wind? Go to the desert and see how wind plays with dust. That's how man is. So it is pride for dust to just sit down and say, God, I don't need you. I went to school. I have the power to keep myself. MOG, hear the word of the Lord now, early enough, before you begin to establish branches. There are certain levels of honor and increase and grace. When it comes to your life, you will be surprised you will not pray for one month and you will not think it's wrong. Because what is wrong? Whether you pray for one month or not, there's an alert coming every day. The Lord led me to give you 100 million. Another person will say, the Lord led me to give you 500 million. And you say, so this is my life. I'm now a rich man. God, that suffering that led me to pray and fast is over. You sing that my Yakare song for him. He says, it's over, over with you. I'm tired. I see you as a luggage. It's over. And then God says, let me respect you. And the first time you step out, that's when you will learn that armed robbers look for rich men. And that's when you will learn that ritualists are looking for exactly those kind of people. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are many people who rise to certain levels in their families. Then they start having certain dreams. And someone just appears to you and says, listen, just to inform you that you are welcome. We have been watching you. The same way we followed your father, we are coming after you. And you say, what happened to me? They were always there. They were only waiting for who rises to that spiritual level. There are some prayers and spiritual activities that don't just send Satan away. It brings him. Look at the prayer and fasting of Jesus. When Jesus was done praying and fasting, it was Satan who came. Please listen to what I'm telling you. This is the voice of the Spirit. Man, unassisted by God, does not have the power to host and sustain the revival coming. I'm saying this to you. I learned this in my own life and even in this ministry. I handed this ministry long ago to God. And even though administration demands that we do the work of oversight and blessing God's people, believe me when I tell you that this ministry belongs to the Lord. It's not a false humility from a man of God. If this ministry belongs to me, I will not survive one week. Are we together? You think it's everybody who sends me a text message who is saying, Apostle, God bless you, you will be surprised. Sometimes I will wake up tired from a conference, just open my text and you will see a long message warning to you from the Lord. People are calling you now and you cannot pick. You think you are a proud person. I just say, oh God, look at this now. How can somebody call you 10 or 20 times and you don't pick? Who do you think you are? Or the apostle they told me about is not the one I'm seeing. <laughs> now imagine that I called the person twice. Okay, let's talk. You don't know me. Yeah. A revival is coming. Many people are jumping and shouting a revival is coming. But they are not paying attention to the kind of stature it takes. Do you know how heavy a revival is? A revival comes with criticisms. A revival comes with you being misunderstood. Are you ready to survive that for his name? Find out people who were matired. I've told you, you know how many people were matired as, as at the end of this year? 
when they were praying during the crossover, they said in the name of Jesus, by 2022 December, I will still be there. And yet for the sake of the gospel today, they have gone. Not for the sake of carelessness. Some of them stood face to face with enemies and they said, denounce your faith. It's not like a newspaper, you are going to build an institution and name it after them. And they said, no, I will stand for Jesus. We are giving you two more minutes to think about it. And they made up their minds. They said, no. Nina Yesune, Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Bayaba. Nina Yesune, Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Bayaba. Nasa Hanuna, Akanke Kenoma. My apologies, you hear me sing a lot of songs in house these days. It's just a song that comes to my spirit relating to what I'm saying. That's the price. I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back. Yeah. I belong to Jesus, I read how the disciples died. Now all these people who are shouting, I'm an apostle. <laughs> read your Bible and see how apostles died. It's not, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm saying you need to sit down and think about the meaning of what you are receiving. Military people, when you are going to NDA, there's a form you sign. That sign is, I've donated myself to the nation. If I reach a general and I retire, fine and good. But if I die in the, in the course of my work, then let it be. That is what it means, oh. When you donate yourself to Jesus Christ, you are not, it's not a conditional donation. Most of us see all of these things, maybe a protocol, follow a man of God when you are coming, all of these privileges, maybe photos online and the rest, and we get carried away by these things. We just feel that all there is is fame and glitz and glamour. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but let me tell you sincerely, signing to stand by the cross is that you have sacrificed your life. Paul says, for me to live is Christ, and if I die, it is gain. Are you willing to? That's what it means to pray for a revival to come. A revival will bring a fierce attack from the great of hell. Lord, send more members to me. You are saying, Lord, send more courses towards my direction to take care of. Send more altars that are fighting people. You think those altars will fold their arms and watch you set people free every week? And then the, if you are the devil, will you be silent over such a person? I belong to Jesus never going back never going back sons now you will know why we honor fathers you know why we honor when we see a man who is 50 years in ministry we kneel down and say daddy god bless you and ignorant people keep talking nonsense we are not just celebrating bodies we are celebrating the testament of mastering the act of taming the flesh and standing for this long with the light of the gospel Hallelujah. Pray in one minute while you are seated. Please pray. I came to charge your heart tonight. Hallelujah. So, we have identified that the real issue, please look up. The real issue is not the situations and circumstances that weaken believers. The real issue is that intrinsically, the heart condition of everyone, except purged by the Spirit of God, already has within itself the tendencies for destruction. Can I tell you, prayerlessness is already in that heart. Lust is already in that heart. Pride is already in that heart. It's not coming. It is there in iniquity. Did my mother conceive me? What it waits for 
is the situation and the scenario that now activates what is inside. Are we together? Yes. By the time you become a CEO of a company, having a turnover of one billion per month, then the spirit of theft that is in every man that is hiding there suddenly comes out through a fierce temptation. Remember, you need 50 million by next week. You can help yourself quietly and nobody will know. So many, many people, they don't know that I've made my choice to follow Jesus. I follow the Lamb wherever you lead. So many, many people, they don't know that I've made my choice to follow Jesus. I follow the Lamb wherever he leads Nina Yesu ne bazan koma bazan koma Please hear me The day your biological father looks at you and says all you know is church you are a useless young man I had confidence in you thinking you are the one who will lift this family I hear there was an opportunity to pay 5 million for something. There was an opportunity to reduce your age by 10 years and you would have gotten a job and you brought this, your church, stupidity. That is the day you can see the semblance of profit in evil and you will be angry. The day somebody looks at you and says you would have married by now, young lady, sit down there and keep saying I'm a child of God, I am a Deborah, I am an Esther, you and, 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 and you will sit down there and be angry. There are times when godliness looks like a burden. Let me tell you sincerely. I've had the honor to pray over men of God and they just come and say, Apostle, you are lucky. Ministry is working. I've been in this city for a long time to an extent that my wife asked me if you are really called. Wife. Not strangers. Strangers can talk nonsense. But when your wife says, sorry, my husband, don't be offended. Let's verify whether we are called so that we'll stop wasting our time. Let me tell you something about men. He will not say anything. He will just stand up in the night and be walking around his living room and say, Lord, so this is how you chose. I was a sinner and I was doing well. I gave my life to you. This is what you are doing with my life now. Is this what you do with people who give their lives to you? In Jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10, the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked, that it is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? This is God speaking about the state of man. There is jealousy locked up in your heart. There is anger locked up in your heart. Just because it has not manifested, I tell you it does not mean it is not there. You will now know the value of coming boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in time of need. So that when you spend time worshiping the Lord and you spend time opening up yourself, if God tells you, young man, you have the spirit of mammon, you won't sit down and say, God, when I just... Do you know some of the calls that God makes to sacrifice, maybe give money or sow your car and the rest, it is not about the car or money. It is these things he's trying to bring out. There are times God will say, lock yourself for three days and fast. And it will not even, it, it won't be anything spectacular. And you'll be wondering, Lord, what are you working on? Just leave God with his training on you. He knows what he's pruning. There are times as a man of God, he will close doors of ministry by himself. Three months, nobody inviting you. And you'll be under pressure to show you are still relevant so that nobody will say his oil is going down and you will try to manipulate invitations whereas those three months were God's window of opportunity for you to find him genuinely because the next level you are stepping into the temptations and the trouble that will fight your anointing you do not yet have the grace for it 
You know, many people just stand to say, God told, he raised me for a generation. A generation, ask the presidents of many nations, have you seen how old the presidents of many nations become within four years? It is said that the presidents and leaders of nations age almost twice their normal time within their tenure as presidents. I've had the honor and the privilege of speaking with a few and I can tell you some of them are in a hurry to go away. When I go for meetings, most times when I'm coming in, maybe the cars, the convoy is bringing me or something. And usually protocol have a way of, you know, just flogging into people's eyes. Everybody give way, apostle is coming. And most times I'm, I squeeze myself in the midst of all this. And people are trying to touch and I'm wondering, oh dear, I wish these people know what is on this head that they are not seeing. Hallelujah. And many people sit down and admire. I'm going to be like this. It's good to be inspired. But let me tell you the truth. Until you build the stamina. And the greatest stamina you need to build is not to get anointing. The greatest stamina you need to build is not to cram scriptures. So that when you stand on stage you can just speak it. The greatest stamina you need is power through God. To tame the flesh like a football. And keep it there like this. At that point, God can give you the keys of Africa and say, please, for the next 10 years moving in Africa, you are the one I'm trusting you. And he, can, he knows that you will do that job. I have seen the revivals coming, I tell you in my visions many times. And ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you sincerely. Many people who are standing in expectation to be featured in this revival will be disappointed. Not because God does not want to use them, but the standard of the Lord has a non-negotiable prerequisite. And among it is not just prayer for anointing. Most of our prayer and fasting is centered around demons and anointing. In the name of Jesus, this spirit has to give way. There is a place for that. In the name of Jesus, Lord, my head will not be dry of oil. And we can fast dry for one week. But let me tell you, the nobler cause for fasting is, Lord, search my heart. You are sending me to the nations. I do not even know what is within me. I do not know the tendencies within me in the presence of fame, in the presence of lifting, in the presence of infinite possibilities. I do not know what is enshrined within my heart. So before I become a casualty to myself, I pray that you come with that refiner's fire. Let me show you two scriptures before we wrap up. Bazan koma baya Nina Yesune Bazan koma James chapter 4 and verse 8 What is the call tonight and what is the solution? James chapter 4 Please give it to us media very quickly and verse 8 Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you he said, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. The first call is draw nigh to God. Not draw nigh to fame. Not draw nigh to a name. Not draw nigh to spiritual activities. In other words, listen, take serious your relationship with God. It does not just give you value to be relevant. It is your system of preservation. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 6 now beckons on us to come boldly. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. To come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. So when you see somebody like Baba Adeboe and many of our fathers, you want to talk with them and they will say, come back on Friday. I am alone with God. It does not make sense. Alone with God looking for what again? And they lock up themselves. Shut themselves away from any fame and any whatever. Oh, we want to give you an award. No, I'm not interested. I'm spending time with the God of heaven. 
You now know why people seek God passionately. They seek God passionately first because they love him. But they seek him as life. He is literally the basis of survival. I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back. I've heard of many, many pastors that were matired in the north. Since when I was in Zaria, I heard of a pastor who was, by the way, I saw the man of God from Adamawa State. May God bless you. They used to bring me many years from Mubi. They, they bring me to Mubi. When there was crisis in Mubi, and you know terrorists came and ravaged that place when the church was about to come back to, uh, together you know they invited me over for a program and such gracious and loving people I, I've, I've seen them kill people a man who told his wife I do not know whether I will survive next week and truly he died it's easy to say may their soul rest in peace but when you stand face to face with what can take your life that's when you will know whether you have stamina or not. It's not when somebody is on a wheelchair. If the person does not get up, they will not arrest you. You will just say, God bless you. Share up your faith. Let's see in another meeting. Save Johnny. But when you stand before somebody who says, Jesus or the world, not even just death, house rent, and you can compromise and get your rent in a moment, or you can stand for Jesus genuinely, but there are consequences, including driving you from that place. And you know, most people look at the story of the Hebrew boys and just say that, um, well, Jesus came. Read your Bible and see those who stood and still died. Including Jesus. Father, take this cup off me. The father kept quiet. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You thought the father would say such humility. I've canceled death. He still died. I belong to Jesus, never going back, never going back. So the revival that is coming will be enhanced. The greatest tool we need, brothers and sisters, is the formation of the character of the Christ. That means you are in your office and people are bribing. Everybody is becoming a millionaire overnight. And you make up your mind and say, I'm going to stand. They will look at you and say, you, are, you, are, you have been stupid for a long time. Do you know what it means for your juniors to come and be buying cars, estates, manipulating all kinds of things. And you are there claiming you are standing for Jesus. Five years, nothing changes. There are many people in this country who would have been higher than they are now. Except that they are stand for Jesus. They were determined that I will not bend. The greatest tool for the revival coming will not be anointing. There are many anointed people who could not stand the revival's past. It is not going to be revelation, Greek and Hebrew. You will talk Greek and Hebrew before the flesh. The flesh will give you the Hebrew and the Greek version of what it means to fall. Samson was anointed. Abraham the great, even the man who was the friend of God. What of Moses? Moses, a man who saw God face to face, the Bible says, yet because of anger, uncontrolled anger, God said you will not enter the promised land. He was not angry for himself. He was angry for a stiff-necked people. You will never understand what Moses went through until God makes you a leader over people. One moment they are singing, Moses, congratulations for bringing us out of Egypt. The next moment they are saying, Moses, we don't understand you and this your God. Aaron, build for us a God that we will bow to. You know what it meant when Jesus stood there with Barabbas and saw people who ate his bread at his crusade? They said, crucify him. Madam, you who I raised your son, don't talk to me. Crucify him. Hosting the revival and the power of God may mean standing alone. It may mean sacrificing your potential for prosperity for life. Yes, sir. Jesus obtained a physical scar in his hand. That was what it took for redemption. There are people today 
who have physical deficiencies in their lives that they incurred not by carelessness. It was the price for standing for Jesus. The character of the Christ more than Christian talk more than Christian whatever. Let me say this as we wrap up. I submit to you and I say this with every sense of honor and respect to my generation. We need to be careful. The level of carelessness in every area. Are we together now? It is my life. That is the language of a generation that is not thinking well. It is my life. I don't care. I can do anything I want to do. It is my life. Dress anyhow, it is my life. Talk anyhow, it is my life. Everybody is talking about revival, clapping about revival, and sometimes respectfully speaking, you see the kind of carelessness and the presence of flesh, and yet we keep advocating revival. God is not a fool. I know God will give me 10,000 people to train. You know what it means for God to trust you with 10,000 souls that he died for to train. Some of them millionaires. Some of them struggling with the flesh. It takes stamina. It is true that a revival is coming. It is true that God is moving across the earth. It is true that God is looking for men and women that are available. No matter how you fall under the anointing, no matter how you stand, no matter how people accredit you, let me tell you, the testimony of character with God, that uprightness, it must become, you must take advantage of the grace of God and stand in faith, a broken and a contrite heart. Psalm 51 verse 17, oh Lord, you will not despise. This is my message tonight. You must get to a point where you are broken before God. The, let me tell you the truth. The greatest unbecoming of this revival will be an, a, a manifestation of pride. The Bible says, let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he falls. There are many in the body who have fallen at different levels. There are many today, some we know, some we've heard, some we see. The only thing we owe our fallen soldiers in the body is number one, our prayers. And number two, within the jurisdiction given to us, if we can have access to encourage them to stand, this is what it, we have. Because in your lifetime, let me tell you, it's like the hand of a clock. It is coming and it will still come to you. You hear that maybe armed robbers came and stole something in a man of God's church. Don't just get up and say it does not have faith. Shame on them. An embarrassment to redemption. No. Even if you don't know him, God bless you. I heard that this happened to you. We pray that the Lord will stand with you and stand by you. How is your wife and family? May the Lord honor you. You have made your own contribution. Because you see, let me tell you, you do not know the kind of evil that will come upon the earth. You hear that somebody has been bereaved. Don't sit down there and be talking and saying, these people, they don't have, when they were teaching about long life, they were not there. You should be the first to go there and say, look, we're standing with you. This is one of the blessings that I learned from this, our orthodox background. Respectfully speaking, Pentecostal and charismatic circles. When people go through down times in their lives, they are the first to push people away. When you give birth to children, when you have promotion, we men of God are quick to bring you. You are my son and you are my daughter. But when something tragic happens, they go to your local church somewhere. The level of hatred that is in the body of Christ. The level of jealousy that is in the body of Christ. The level of ill wishing one for another that is in the body of Christ. And yet we all stand to claim that revival will come. It's a joke. No. Are we together? A man of God starts ministry and you are laughing. Oh, this one is not, he has only two members. Sorry for him. No, it shouldn't be so. When we held our first crusade 
I'm not even sure we're more than 50. I can't remember if we're up to 50. You would have laughed at that the group of 50 people. But this is what God is doing today. That's why when Dr. Panam, he was preaching my message with what he was doing. When I saw these precious people, I know some of them, they may not carry the comeliness of celebrity musicians. So they don't, they are not what your applauds. I mean, what this lady is playing, this and that. But tomorrow you see these same people singing the praises of Jesus to the nations and you quickly bring this and say, please autograph it for me. Our world for you. My charge tonight is that the greatest tool, I repeat again, for the revival coming will be more, it will take more than anointing to lift up Jesus and represent him. It will take more than excellent preaching. I know that Africa and the world has exceptional people. God has granted us grace in the area of revelation, but make no mistakes. We are not the first. There are people who have come before us who were like the epitome of the exegesis of scripture and yet the revival still failed in their watch. There are many men of God in Nigeria and yet Nigeria is still the way it is. That should already humble us that there is koinonia in Nigeria alongside many ministries and we keep bragging with the little we have done yet the nation is still acting as if there are no believers. It should humble us to say, Lord, we need you. There is something that we do not have. A broken and a contrite heart. Dr. Panam got it absolutely when he wrote the song, Lord, we are sorry. We've turned around, we've done all kinds of things. He says, now we repent. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. And then restore, bring down your glory. It was not a special number. It was a prophetic word for many years that will come. We need to repent of many things. Listen to my message, the purified church. I'm sure you've got, use it as a retreat material. There are people shouting, attacking immorality, attacking a lot of things. But there are other aspects of lack of character too. There are others who are attacking money because they are not collecting money. What of pride? What of jealousy? Then there are people who are, everything that corrupts the heart must be dealt with without sparing. No matter how small and no matter how great. The deception of stratifying the flesh and say these are weightier matters simply because they carry a heavier sociological embarrassment. No. Everything you find jealousy in your heart, deal with it. Lust, deal with it. Pride, deal with it. Anger, deal with it. How do you deal with it? You don't have the power but you can submit yourself before the presence of the one who deals with it. Now you understand the mystery of the woman with the alabaster box. When she brought it, she broke it. The posture of the champions in our generation, let me show you. This is going to be the posture. Those who are standing may not even find the ground that they will stand upon. This is the posture of champions for the revival that is coming. While people are clapping for you and while people are calling you names, you are by the altar crying for mercy. Lord, purge my heart, purge my life, purge my ministry. Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going around the nations. Lord, shut my ears from all of this beyond the level that is enough to encourage me. You are a CEO. You are the next Dangote. Congratulations. This is the posture. I want you to get this because God is speaking to all of us. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Take away hatred from my life. Take away jealousy from my life. Take away pride from my life. When you get a woman pregnant, her stomach will protrude and everybody will know. So it will bring a shame, a shame to you. But if you carry the spirit of jealousy, there is no physical evidence. They are called sins of the spirit. They are dangerous things that can kill. This perfectionist mentality we are advocating in the body of Christ is going to destroy a generation. If fathers keep rebuking the generation, they have earned the right to by their character. But let me challenge young people, especially younger ministers. Let us be careful the way we use our mouth talking. We are just starting the journey. There are many heights 
there are many challenges that are coming. I've heard of people insulting politicians. God forbid. Many people have said God forbid and today their heads have remained down and they cannot lift it forever again because they vowed and said a lot of things. We need to be careful. The language of a man of God in this end time is the language of mercy. Lord grant us grace. It is by your mercy that we stand. It is by your mercy that we do what we are doing. If I go for a crusade and somebody rises from a wheelchair while you are clapping and say this apostle is anointed I say Lord I know that it is by your mercy thank you for that grace mama if you raise six children and they are all excellent don't start laughing at a woman who is having a son that is drinking because your children have not died yet there are people who became foolish at 55 there is still hope for the devil if the person does not stand through humility I am 10 years in ministry. That's too early. Too early for any noise. Too early for any pride. A man of God called me one day and said, Apostle, you have such vast experience in ministry. I said, hold on. What you see is the mercy of God. I can share with you the little that I have and not little in a way of demeaning myself. Our sufficiencies of God. But let me tell you the truth. If you think I can give you the kind of advice Baba Deboe will give you, I will be stupid to believe I can do that. Do you know what it means to sit down over tens of thousands of churches? You don't know who is planning what against you and yet you can get up in the morning and thank the Lord and not be angry. There are many people who have not controlled two children. Respectfully speaking, when Baba's son transited in glory, I happened to be there at the burial. And when I was watching everything, all that was in my heart was my God. Look at the burden that is on this man. And sometimes as I'm coming for koinonia, there are documents to sign. There are meetings. There are several things. Sometimes you see me just coming. You don't know what I was doing before I came. This is our own little kindergarten, whatever we're doing. You, there are men of God who as at the time they are standing to preach their wives are in ICU and yet they are mandated by their covenant of righteousness to still preach there are even people while they are preaching an obituary comes and they say just to let you know your cousin just died that can destabilize them yet they will stand and preach and counsel please hear my voice again let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he falls to our brethren in the body of Christ who have found themselves fallen, there is hope for you. You can stand, provided there is brokenness. Dr. Panam again sang and brought to the body of Christ. He says, don't give up, it is not over. He said, even when you fail, it is not over. The righteous man falls seven times, the Bible says, but he will rise again. So this is the encouragement. When you see a young minister who is misbehaving, don't insult them and just tear them down and discourage them. There is still a revivalist. Guide them in love. You who are matured and tell them, listen, you need to drop these excesses. Are we together? When you see those who are standing, encourage them. May God grant you the grace. Oh, I don't need that. I'm okay. I'm fine. I know what to do. <laughs> One day I was traveling somewhere and the way the plane was shaking. I'm not talking of this mild shake in the air. Shaking that you know that even you know the people around, you know there's a way they behave that God is only you that will help us. I just told myself, I said, Lord, if this is going to be the moment to die, please help me and take care of my parents, take care of my siblings, all these my precious children that I'm taking care of. Help me raise somebody who can do that work and let me be with you in peace. That plane was shaking almost as if we were all going to die. Sincerely, if I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. When we landed, people clapped. Round of applause to the pilot for being able to walk to, I don't know what kind of demonic cloud that was. So next time you are confessing, for me to live is Christ. Pause. You can stop there till the day your faith finishes the other verse. And to die is gain. Are 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Revival is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, to the revivalists, to the apostles, both manifesting now and in the making, do not allow anyone and anything discourage you. Some of you are very stubborn. God will still use you, but not that version of you. You need to repent. Hallelujah. Some of you would think it does not matter. A gentleman sent me a text and said, what do I think about tattoos? I said, if you have it before you were born again, there's nothing that can, happen, that can happen. But if by the time you are born again and you still want to do all of these things, you see, all things are lawful but not all. In the kingdom, it's not all about sinfulness and righteousness. There are times it's about foolish and wise. There were ten virgins. They were all virgins. And yet, as virgins, they still suffered because five were foolish and five were wise. Are we together now? If I draw a mouse on my head now and I come to preach and I say it's my life, it's not my business, please don't feel bad. I'm just, just to touch on it and then we'll pray. Are we together? And you don't, I, I just tell you, how, will you believe if I'm praying for you? <laughs> Let's not say these things don't matter and keep making a fool out of ourselves. No, sir. If, it's, if someone did it in the past and the person has come to the fold, there's nothing we can do. Believe us, let's be careful. Respectfully speaking, some of these things we ship from the West. I'm not condemning, but the West needs the mercy of Africa. God is shipping people to correct things there. The generation of people who have risen right now uh, is a generation that does not respect God. Just because they are technologically advanced does not mean they are spiritually advanced. Don't trade your heritage of spirituality. Are we together? Get back to the things that produce power indeed. Get back to the place of prayer in the morning. But more than all this, your heart condition. Please, I'm giving you an assignment this week. Go and dedicate any one of the days and just spend at least two hours alone with God. It doesn't matter whether you are husband and wife. Do it differently. Please ask for permission and just say, God, some of you need to go back and say, Lord, I'm not coming to the, the, the Western ideology that I'm meeting now. I'm coming to the God of my covenant that knew me before I rose. Lord, have mercy. What am I doing wrong? Where am I missing it with my life? And be very sincere. If it is the God of heaven, he will not condemn you. But he will also not condone. He will come with his fire. The refiner's fire. And tear that dross apart. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. Practice periodic retreats. Never be too busy for retreats. Shut down, even if it means to shut down administration politely apologize to the people and say the, 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 the nature of things around my spiritual life, please I need two days alone with God. Sometimes you need to tell your friends, please, please. Oh, we, we need to go and watch the movie. As an man you is playing, can't you watch a repeat of the match? Will your failures repeat? Satan is plotting evil for you and you are two weeks left to fall into it. And God is, when you begin to sense, some of you, this is the season you are in right now. You are sensing that you need to be alone with God. Make sure you run after koinonia and go and hide with God. Don't let people say there's so much demand on your anointing. That is absolute nonsense. You will die, they will bury you, you will become a lesson to many and the world will continue. Please, let's go back to work on ourselves. I'm sorry, but I will have to tell you, some of you need to change your dressing. I've told you this thing. Take away some of these demonic things and take it out of your life and become a genuine Christian indeed. And please don't tell me it does not matter. 
Hallelujah. This, it does not matter, is the devil's trap to destroy our generation. It's not only prayer. It's not only fasting. It's not only rema. Even the devil has revelation. He used it on Jesus. We're talking about the uprightness and the character of the Christ. That when somebody looks at you, they don't say you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, you are Igbo. Uh -huh, you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Mm -mm. The life of Christ has swallowed you so much. That's why I told you when it has to do with the formation of the character of the Christ, there are no champions there. Everybody is a healthy project at work by the mercy of God. When I lie down before God to cry here, I'm not going to lie down as Apostle Joshua Selman. No, I will roll before him and say, you who shows men mercy, have mercy upon this son of yours. Have mercy upon this son of yours. Leave all the text messages. Let the text messages keep coming. MOG, you are this. Let all the revelations keep coming. There are times you need to close those books and keep them aside. Don't let revelations fool you. There are times you need to close all of those things and just lie down in his presence and say, my father and my maker, I come before you. Let like the threshing floor of Naboth, let the refiner's fire rest upon me. Let there be a purification of my heart and my tendencies. Search my heart, oh God, and try my thoughts. And if you find any wicked way in me, lead me to the way everlasting. And God says, this is the kind of vessel. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Man of God, we may not condemn you, but the secret place is calling for you. Businessman, we may not condemn you, but the secret place is calling for you. Father and mother, husband to your wife and wife to your husband, children to parents. The message and the language of condemnation is the language of children. But the language of condoning is the language of fools. You have to get back to the place of the altar and cry. Some of you may need to, I'm saying it again. You may need to have some time with God. Shut down your television. Shut down whatever. And say, Lord, it is me and you again. Look for a worship song like this. Something playing. And while people are snoring away the next the next 10 years of their lives, you are crying before your maker and you are saying, Lord, help me. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Feel this day with your spirit once again when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh. when the glory comes there'll be no words to say Hallelujah. Let me make an altar call up front before we pray. You've heard the message already. Apostle, I need Jesus. I can't tell lies. This message came to the core of my soul. Whether you are in this auditorium or outside, please hear me. If you are leaving this place right now and the trumpet sounds, can you honestly say that I have a stand with Jesus that will make heaven? Nobody condemns you, but he's giving you room for a new beginning. And you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I don't even know whether I'm standing in the faith or not. I'm going to count one to five. Please, I want you to run. Run and come and stand here right now. He's giving you a new beginning. One. who is looking at you come to Jesus when the glory comes 
There'll be no words to say. Oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Jesus said, if you deny me in the presence of men, that I will deny you before my Father and even the holy angels. For those who are following online, whether you are following from the US, the UK, you are following by way of television, help those under the anointing, you are following by way of rebroadcast, just leave them there. Let me tell you the truth. God can give you a new beginning. You are a man of God listening to me. It does not matter what has happened to your life and your ministry. Please hear this preacher. There is hope for you. You can start afresh again with him. One of the most powerful words in the Bible is the word again. Again. Businessman, I know you went to a shrine to get all kinds of things done on your head. For as long as you are alive, there is still hope for you. Apostle, you do not know what I've done with my life. Can I tell you the truth? If you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. Your own prerequisite is the genuineness of your brokenness. And let me tell you this, body of Christ, please, for this one time, hear this clarion call. Stop laughing at wounded soldiers within the body. Provided you find brokenness, be the person to rush to help wounded people to stand. We are all standing by the grace of God. And for anyone who is standing and shaking, make sure you throw away pride and take your life seriously with brokenness. Do not say it does not matter. That's what, that's the true spirit of revival. You have your pastor, you have a man of God, somebody who used to be on fire for God and the person has backslidden. Talking about them and laughing and just talking rubbish is not going to bring restoration. At the least, if you cannot do anything, you owe your intercession. Lord, let this man of God not go down. Let this woman of God not go down. Lord, let this church not go down. For the sake of your name, preserve your heritage. That's the character of a believer. Oh, I used to know this musician. This one happened. I used to know this man of God. I used to know this businessman. Sometimes we pride in celebrating people's former glory. No. That's not the life we are called into. God is giving us an opportunity right now. He says, create in me a clean heart. For those who are standing, congratulations. But master the art of walking with God and in his presence. Cry before him day and night. Not in condemnation but in brokenness. Search my heart. Lord what else can destroy me in the next 5 or 10 years. Do not wait until I go there. I'm not ashamed if you reveal it to me. And cry before him at the altar. Anybody who acknowledges the state of men. And the mercy of God will be very careful as you are dealing with issues in the body of Christ. Because let me tell you the truth. This journey is very far. And there are heights we do not even know how far we will go. When you hear that someone's marriage was destroyed, pray. If you can support with your prayer and your counseling, do so. If you cannot, keep quiet and pray. You hear that somebody went to a herbalist, pray. Provided if they, if they become stubborn and rebellious, they are doing it, they are undoing themselves. They will reap the consequences of rebellion. But provided you find brokenness, body of Christ, hear this preacher. We have to rewrite the narrative of our response to wounded people within the body. We need to be careful. 
You hear that a politician who loved God before now has gone down spiritually. Don't just laugh at him and say foolish people. You don't know what it means to be in a position where you are sitting upon altars and charms. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. Please lift your hands, those of you who are in front. Thank you for the courage of coming out to make this decision. And those who are following online, the Lord Jesus sees your heart. Please say this after me. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. Create in me a clean heart. Give me a new beginning. I declare that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I am a child of God. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for bringing these ones. This is what this is all about. You're giving them an opportunity to start afresh again. You declare to us that whosoever sins we forgive that it is forgiven. Therefore, by the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight until forever, I declare that you belong to Jesus. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to you. Please, I want you to follow the counselors, all of you. The counselors are just by my right, waving their hands towards you. May God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly as they go. Let's appreciate them very quickly as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Just a minute and we're out of this place. I just needed to bring out that which is consistent with what the Holy Spirit is doing. Just two quick announcements. The medical team is now open for new members. Our medical people need